Suppose that you have a block attached to a spring and it's at rest at point x0. If we change the position of the block and take it to point x, the spring exerts a force on the block to take it to x0 again and causes an oscillation around x0. This equation is called Hooke's law. To solve this equation, we define omega as the square root of k over m and the answer is a linear combination of sine and cosine. The potential energy around x0 is equal to kx squared over 2 and can be written like this. Suppose that we have an arbitrary potential. Any potential is approximately parabolic in the neighborhood of a local minimum. The Taylor series around this local minimum gives this expression. As long as the amplitude is small, the motion can be approximately treated as simple harmonic. Now it's time to solve the Schrodinger equation using this potential. We can separate the Schrodinger equation into two time-dependent and time-independent equations. And what we need to do is to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation for this potential. It can be rewritten as this expression. And the Hamiltonian for which we need to solve the time-independent equation can be expressed as this. Note that x and p are operators and do not commute meaning that xp and px are not equal. Let's find this expression. Pay attention that they are operators and should be calculated acting on a test function. By using this operator on a test function f of x, we see that this expression is equal to ih bar and is the equation for commutation relation for x and p operators. Now, to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation, for the harmonic oscillator, we define these two operators. Let's take a look at the Hamiltonian. If x and p were numbers, we could simply use this expression, but they are operators and ab is not generally the same as ba. However, we define these two operators to see if we can find an expression for the Hamiltonian that really helps. Let's calculate a minus a plus and a plus a minus. Using these two operators, we can rewrite the Hamiltonian like this, and our commutation relation is like this. The time-independent equation can be written in terms of a plus and a minus, and we see that a plus psi satisfies the Schrodinger equation with energy e plus h bar omega, and a minus psi is a solution with energy e minus h bar omega. If we have psi as an answer to the time-independent Schrodinger equation with energy E, we can find other solutions using A plus and A minus operators, which are called ladder operators. A plus being the raising operator and A minus the lowering one. Let's find the ground state. If the lowering operator acts on the ground state, it must yield zero. So we can write this equation like this and the expression in the parenthesis must yield zero. What we need to do is to solve this differential equation and find psi zero. By integration, we have this equation and psi zero is equal to this expression. We can also find A using the normalization condition. Now, if you don't know how we solve this integral, this is the solution. It's a really nice trick to solve the integral by changing coordinates. We can also use the Schrodinger equation to find the energy of the ground state, which is equal to half h bar omega. So, for our excited states, we have these expressions. To find the normalization coefficients a1, a2 to an, we can use the following method. A plus psi n is proportional to psi n plus 1, and A minus psi n is proportional to psi n minus 1, okay? So, if f of x and g of x are two functions that go to 0 at infinity, we can prove this expression. Note that I have used integration by parts in the second line. To find cn and dn, we can write these integrals as psi n plus 1 and psi n minus 1 are normalized, these two integrals yield 1. 
And by finding a minus a plus psi n and a plus a minus psi n, now we can calculate cn and dn. And by using this equation, we can now find a general formula for excited states. We want to prove that these stationary states for the harmonic oscillator are orthogonal. And based on these expressions, either m must be equal to n or the integral is zero. So we have this condition and these states are orthogonal. As an example, let's find the expectation value of v of x in the nth state. A nice way is to rewrite x and p operators in terms of a plus and a minus. And the expectation value of v of x can be calculated in the nth state. Finally, let's graph the first few stationary states. As you can see, they are alternately even and odd, and each graph has n nodes.